talking to you before, you were um, you were saying there was you and another guy doing really well in the dark, but um, but Cockney Cockney gave you a sponsorship or something. You were saying, could you just let the folks know? Yeah, the, the, I tell you the fella, Eric Eric had it the when he had diabetes. Him and Maureen were together. They're Maureen Flowers, and he wanted to go and sponsor somebody. So they had two people in mind. They had me. Right. I was a little cocky. I was cocky like him and a bit aggressive towards people because I wanted Wincy. I wanted to earn the money. And then also there was a fellow named Dennis Heckling from Yorkshire. He was a good little player as well. Dennis was. But me being a local lad, I think it swung swung it for me. So Eric, he sponsored me roughly, I'd say, about £10,000 right. to travel the world, you know, the, the, from America to Canada, Finland, Denmark, Sweden. I mean, it was it was great. I mean, I remember taking loads of photographs. The first airplane I've ever been on, the first hotel I've ever stayed in, yeah. was it when I played in the county. I thought I can get used to this. When was the and, first um, you won? Well, it, it was always on condition that I paid him back, which was the best right. thing he ever did. Yeah, yeah. So when if he there? walked in the room and I was sitting down talking, right, I got it. He'd give me a rollicking. He'd say, "What are you sitting with them lot for? They are not your mates. Get you owe me. And he'd say it in front of everybody as well. He was so bloody. Um, Honest, if you know what I mean, he'd say, "Listen, Taylor, you owe me seven thousand four hundred quid." What are you doing sitting down there? I say, "Eric, I've been practicing for two hours. Shut up. Never yeah. mind. Shut up. Get on that practice board." So, even even when he when he wasn't sponsoring me, if he walked in the room, I'd get up, and start practicing. Right, right. Because he give me he give me that dirty look. What are you doing sitting down there? What are you doing talking to that lot? Because he never thought the players were friends. You know, he thought yeah. they're all enemies. So you've got to get yourself right. You think you think you think he was right there? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. I always said if you want the England football team to start winning, put out Eric as manager, because he'll yeah. motivate you, trust me. You yeah. can also be the nicest fellow you've ever met in your life as well. Right. Yeah. I used to call him Jekyll and Eric. Jekyll and Eric. <laughs> I did. Because I used to say to him, which one are you now, Jekyll or Eric? You go on Eric now. I'll be I'll be Jekyll at ten o'clock on about about six pints. Yeah. <laughs> Did you um what was the first competition you went you won? The first one, there used to be a Dart magazine called Dart World. And it used to advertise counties did where you could enter you could pay something like ten pounds and enter tournaments or five in them days, like the the first one was the Derbyshire Open. Right. And it was it was five hundred pounds for the winner. My dad drove me, he paid me entry fee, my dad did, he drove me there. It was only about an hour's drive for me, and I won it. And I can remember, they paid me, they paid you in cash in them days. Right. And I went looking for the the organiser. I said, where's the organiser, please? He says, why, what's up? I said, I, I need a quick word with him. He says, he's in the office there, and it's like, a, I think it was like a school. So yeah. I've gone in there, I said, can I have a word with you, mate? He paid me in £50 notes. Right. See, so you got ten fifty pound note. And I said, What's this? This you've given me here. He says, What you on about? I said, This here, what's this? I was gonna jump over the table and grab him. He says, That's your money. That's your that's I said, that, that's not money. I've never seen that. What's that? I said, You it's can buy a Terry Sous in Basel for fifty quid. <laughs> so he says, honestly, he was laughing. He says, That's legal tender. We had never seen my dad had never even seen a fifty pound note. No, no. So uh, that was the first one. I think the second one was Lincolnshire. It's um What's it called? Near Botlines, I can't think what you call it. Skegness. And yeah. that was, I think that was £750, I think. Right. So it was fantastic. When I was working and earning like £70 a week, I was entering these little tournaments and winning 500 And what we used to do, because I had a little Teddy Stouse in Burslem then, in Blake Street in Burslem, I paid £7,500 for it. So right. but we hadn't got anything. So everything was second hand given to us. Like we had the old army blankets and the coats on the bed and stuff like that. So <laughs> my first wife, I said to her, what do we need now? She said, what we could do with some saucepans, some new saucepans. So I looked at the prize money and thought, if I get to the last eight, I can buy the saucepans. <laughs> so and that's how I did it. So, so it was, I was always motivating myself to, to earn money. Yeah, I understand that, yeah. So I get, to the, I get to the semi-final, I think, right, I can buy them new towels now, which is after as well. And then the next tournament, I say, what do we need now? We need carpets. Uh, duvets, duvets on the bed. I thought I'd won the lottery. <laughs> Seriously, it was brilliant to have a duvet instead of having like ten blankets on your bed because we had no central heating and then the windows were, were rubbish, you know, drafty. Yeah. And then uh, I remember having a shower from British Gas. I'd, I'd got something like five hundred and fifty pound at the bank, and this shower was about four hundred and eighty quid. So I said, "Come on, we'll have a shower because." I kept having baths all the time and getting colds, you know, getting yeah. uh, chills on me. 
So I had a shower, and everyone in the street wanted to come and look at my shower. Oh my god! It was a power. I was got all the power shower, so you could, you could fire it at the oh, kids. Like it was I don't know, you named the power. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, it was brilliant, honestly. Yeah. So I was going through the house, and then eventually I thought, well, I'm going to try and earn enough money now to buy the house or buy another house, and that's how I did it. I just kept pushing forward, right? And I was always one for practice, practice, practice. So when Alex sponsored me, the the first one was a, a place called Moncton in Canada. And we went, we went about five days early, we practiced together and I ended up winning it. Right. Which that then put me into the world championships, last place. Right. Um, and, and then the rest is history, really. I, I went there, I won that. I beat Bob Anderson in the final. That yeah. put me into world championships and I won that one. I beat Eric in the final. And, and after that then, I think the first year, I think I entered something like 50 competitions and won, I think I won 48 of them. So I was picking really money good. up every week. I think you won brilliant like it was 13 world titles you win in a row. No, no, the world titles in a row. Yeah. Eight world champ eight, yeah, eight, the world win. title, eight years on the trot. Right. But well, you were well, you 95 to 2000 and something. You ranked number one. 2003. Ranked. And then I lost in the final the year after, which I, I should have won really. I, I threw it away. But it was a lot of pressure off me, Brian. There was a lot, a lot of pressure off me. A lot of jealousy, a lot of backbiting. You know what I mean? It was it was getting to me a little bit. Have you noticed? Really then to to lose it. Have you noticed? Then, the more successful you get, though, Phil, even family members get jealousy, don't they? The more money you make, and you get successful, people seem to get the screen streaking them, don't they? Yeah, good. Yeah. I, do I, know, know, I don't even know you, and they call you. <laughs> the best thing Eddie Bristol ever said to me, you know, Bri, he says, when the players are not speaking to you, that means you're good. Yeah. He says, and then all of a sudden, he said, if they start talking to you and start offering you buy you a drink, that means you're playing crap. And I remember I'd lost, I'd lost in a few tournaments, and then all of a sudden, all the players are talking to me. It dawned on me. Yeah, he's right. Hey up, he's right. Hey up, you're being friendly. You're being friendly. You're being friendly. That means I'm no good. Yeah. So I got back on the practice board, reinvented myself because I'm always pushing forward all the time. Yeah. And uh, made sure I got back to the top again. And it was a fella named Peter Manley, because I used to take the dartboard off the wall. Yeah, yeah I don't know, you can sign it. the players yeah, you sign it. it. Yeah, that's right. Give it a young, young kid in the audience. See? I know, I remember that. Always. And he, he, oh. he did it on me. He beat me, took the dartboard down off the wall. I thought, you little son, yeah. that'll never happen again. And that was the best. And after that, he did that, and I won over a million pounds that year in prize money. And I remember saying to Peter Manley, that's the Peter Manley million that is. You were actually, it was actually brilliant, like. You were actually quicker than... Um, um, Usain Bolt to get into that dartboard <laughs> to take <laughs> off and sign it. <laughs> yeah, what was the but best? you know what? Over the years, yes, over the years, Bri, I've had people tap me on the shoulder at exhibitions, let's yeah. say Middlesbrough or Newcastle, whatever, and as I've turned around, there's a big lad standing there like yourself, and I said, hello, can you remember me, Phil? No, who are you? You said that I was that little lad you bought on stage. I was only nine then. Yeah. I'm thinking, you're kidding. Brilliant. I'm about six foot four now. Yeah, I went, wow, how good's that? I know, the, the little memories like that are great, great yeah, in my life. Now I'm retired anyway. 